Hello there, Conrad of the Commonwealth from here. And assets and character reusing sequel that might take nearly six years to deliver, with no new The Legend of Zelda 2D top down or 3D games in between. The longest wait between two installments in the history of the franchise. In other words, this 20th The Legend of Zelda title is being developed to be the best Zelda of all time, as this game is clearly like no other. And after you leave a like, subscribe, and press the notification bell, and again for all notifications, I will explain to you through this theory why Breath of the Wild 2 will be like no other title in the series. Let's begin with the following. Not since Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, we have been able to revisit and get deeper into the same Hyrule, playing as the same Link. Though even there, the territory we went through was only very slightly a part of the original game and in a completely different way with different characters. And with different characters and objectives than we had in the first game. Hence, we have so far been deprived of one thing in each era of Hyrule, answers. As this land of one game per era holds so many secrets and mysteries that are just waiting to be detailed to us. Breath of the Wild's Hyrule in particular is one giant riddle, wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Just look at this game's position in the timeline. We know that it takes place after all the prior games in the timeline, including Breath of the Wild. But how we got here is one giant mystery, which requires exposition. Perhaps from the one character who might have gone through it all, including a potential convergence of the three timeline branches back into one unified one. Thus granting Breath of the Wild and its sequel a liberty that no Zelda game since Ocarina of Time has had, namely develop games with all of Hyrule's historic races minus the Yeti from Twilight Princess and the Minish slash Bikori and Wind Tribe from the Minish Cap. And even if we have concept art of scrapped plans of a Minish slash Picori village from Breath of the Wild, which shows how the Zelda team intended to turn this game into an even more diversive land, and in the sequel, they are very likely to continue to expand that, but this time in more areas, underground, on the surface, and in the sky. Which brings us over to the three layered structure that this game likely has, the underground, surface with underwater, and sky. The three layers that all could potentially offer brand new ways of discovery and exploration. Obviously, we know Hyrule of the Era of the Wild. We have received a solid taste for gliding in its sky and even aerial combat. We have crossed its mighty rivers and lakes, the former by swimming, the other by other means, and even explored some of its underground facilities where nearly all of them were closed puzzle boxes. Not only that, with a korok leaf and a raft, we have even been able to sail Hyrule's four seas, Farron, Nekluda, Laneru, and Akala. It is just that in all of these cases and layers, we have been limited. In the sky, we had nowhere to land while still remaining in the sky. That changed when the floating wooden enemy platforms were added to the paid DLC 1 and its master mode, and were very likely testing grounds for the sky islands in Breath of the Wild 2, which were revealed on the final day of E3 2021. Numerous floating landmasses with new stories to tell, mysteries to theorize about, and challenges to offer, including based on the temple structures seen in this nighttime shot, which could be traditional Zelda dungeons. But there is more. Unlike in Skyward Sword, we have a day and night cycle as well in the sky. Another example of how Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel is breaking limitations. At least at the moment of the upload of this video, we don't know how much the existing surface of Hyrule will change. Well, with the exception that we will hopefully be able to do the most important thing, lift up and pet the doggos. And though central Hyrule seems to be malice free for the time being, this could quickly change. Even without the scenario of a surface of malice, it is likely that the Zelda team are currently addressing the surface's greatest shortcoming in Breath of the Wild, namely the lack of underwater gameplay and content. Until it is confirmed in a future trailer, these massive sections of Hyrule still remain as empty spaces which we are discouraged from reaching by swimming stamina, but which the sequel could easily do something about, by bringing back underwater swimming and locations found in all past 3D Zelda games prior to Breath of the Wild, excluding The Wind Waker. A possibility for sure, and another example of how you can easily expand the existing surface of Hyrule by simply letting us explore all of its layers including underwater where you could provide us another great water temple after the ancient system in Skyward Sword and maybe even a long forgotten Zora settlement or ruins. 
If the Hylians and Zona had ancient ruins, then why shouldn't the long-living Zora also have some underwater? And we haven't even scratched the very deep potential found in Hyrule's underground caves and caverns, which the Zelda team could definitely expand and turn into a bigger area if they want to take a greater advantage of them. But it all comes down to balancing the different layers all together. We already know that there will be at least some action on the ground since E3 2019 and this brief shot from the E3 2021 teaser. And this time in proper underground caves which are part natural and part man-made. The potential of combining the sky, surface with its underwater and finally underground, though likely in the reverse order, is how you expand the experience from Breath of the Wild. Maybe not with multiple open world maps, but layers with separate maps that don't feel artificial, but rather as an extension to the map without adding additional provinces beyond Hyrule's borders. With this as our new theme park, which obviously consists of existing attractions, but also many others, plus change features to the ones we already know and love, we can finally begin to add dungeons and a boss enemy variety, which was sorely missing in Breath. Add those with special powers, which are already confirmed, and a clear goal in Hyrule Castle, and we already have a sequel that will likely be far better than the original. Especially if the Zelda team can nail a story that has all the elements, a good plot house, a dramatic and exciting opening, new challenges which we face with new powers, solid main and supporting characters, a plot twist, a turning point, a villain that is iconic, cunning and skilled and unreachable at first, and last but not least, a world and quest that organically unfolds in front of our eyes as we play the game. Building on the three main characters of this sequel, Ganondorf vs. Zelda and Link the return of the former and possibly steel wielders of the Triforce of Power, Wisdom, and Courage. A premise that is enhanced with far more cutscenes than in Breath of the Wild, all introducing us to a battle or scenario and then followed by a conclusion. The basic structure of story writing with a beginning, mid, and end which is crucial to us, the reader, viewer, or player to immerse ourselves into every quest, dungeon, battle, and so on. It is, after all, a spectacle, and we all want a good show with the fanfare that the 20th Legend of Zelda title deserves. A game that is loud and clear when it comes to the following message. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild? That was just the introduction and the background story that you needed to know in order to fully enjoy the showdown that has been building up over 19 prior The Legend of Zelda titles to this 20th one where we'll go through all kinds of emotions and sit back speechless after progressing through the best main storyline and side quests in the series, conquer some of the best dungeons and puzzles that have been sent our way, and most of all, face a final boss battle that will blow our minds with excellent build-up, exposition, gameplay, twists, and conclusions. A game that is a true 10 out of 10, another 10 out of 10 with the significant traditional Zelda shortcomings that we saw in Breath of the Wild, all tied to the lack of proper dungeons, like a variety in dungeon interior and boss design, and obviously a terrible final phase of the final boss. In other words, a title that doesn't hold back and delivers, much like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has delivered, as this might be the end of the road for one of the most iconic villains in video game history. And then you have the many combinations, which are clearly the main theme of this sequel, from its playable character, which are likely two entities combined, to enemies, world layers, and so on. A premise that could hold endless potential in a 50 hour or so main quest. In fact, this theme has been teased to us since the reveal in the E3 2019 Nintendo Direct, where combining different layers of clothing was one of the reasons why we got close-ups of Link and Zelda from the back, side, and front. The other was obviously to highlight Zelda's new hairdo. Changes that have transpired from Breath of the Wild to the sequel and which are a testament to what kind of evolution Hyrule's characters, powers, items, enemies, and villains will go through from 2017 to 2022. Well, that and Link losing the Master Sword in the opening in a typical Metroid way where Samus is deprived of her powers. But back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 being the 20th Zelda game. We just need to realize how special these last five years have been. How much the Zelda team headed by Eiji Aonuma and Hidemaru Fujibayashi have wanted to do more with this amazing world of Hyrule. And now they are so close to bringing Gandorf back 20 games after Ganon made his debut in Zelda 1. It is clear that they are fully dedicated to this project and not focused on any other new Zelda titles until this most ambitious of titles is out. Since no other Zelda titles but this one deserves to be the 20th, 
Why else would you revive Ganondorf after not using him in a new Zelda game since 2006? To deliver a Zelda game that will forever be remembered as the real quest and showdown, which closed the Zelda of old on the Nintendo Switch and opened the Zelda of new on its successor. That is the true potential of this sequel and the 20th Legend of Zelda game. A little that goes beyond former limitations and becomes a title that we finally can say is better than The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and even Breath of the Wild, in nearly every way that matters in a Zelda title. This for the first time in a Zelda game, we will encounter most of the same characters from the previous game, with new dialogue options and quests. Getting closer together, as the Zelda team are shaping up the ultimate two-game combo, and where it is clear that there is one aim, to surpass Breath of the Wild and bring even more life to the already existing template developed from 2011 to early 2017, the physics engine, weather and climate system, cooking and so on. Hopefully, for that we will also see other new The Legend of Zelda experiences, both in 2D and 3D, as the wait for new open-air adventures is definitely worth it. But having a brand new pre-course, before a new main course and then a dessert remake remaster of a beloved title of the past. Only that in the case of the 20th The Legend of Zelda game, they made an exception. There simply couldn't be any new games after the 19th one, Breath of the Wild, until its sequel is ready, hopefully in 2022. That one is destined to be the 20th, even if that means waiting nearly 6 years after the 19th game in the series. And that's really it about the 20th Zelda game that will dominate everything from the moment its official title drops to its defining trailer and final release date is revealed, to the praise and love it will receive when we'll all return back to Hyrule of the Era of the Wild and Malice. If you haven't already, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the Commonwealth Realm, press the notification bell and again for all notifications to not miss any upcoming videos about Breath of the Wild 2, other Zelda videos and theories, Nintendo Switch OLED and so much more that will define the big year 2022. Finally, a big thanks as usual goes to all our patreon.com slash commonrealm patrons and in particular to our loyal producer Charles Shash. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.